Well, it seems DE really likes their beam weapons, especially making them mimic the Amprex and the Nucor, because with this iteration of the Galaxion, it chains up to four enemies. So, uh, how are its stats? Well, it's at a 20% crit chance, it has a nice 2.2 times crit multiplier, and has about 40% status. As well, punch through does apply, so you can chain off more than four enemies. As well, with it being a tenant weapon, you can acquire one of seven progenitors, those being cold, impact, heat, toxin, magnetic, electricity, and radiation. As you see as I keep attacking these enemies, I chose with radiation. We'll cover that in a minute. So, uh, I've made two builds for us today. One involves around using two armored archon shards and or a hydroid to apply armor strip and go through the enemy's armor and just straight up kill them. And the other one is for corpus killing. Obviously, you can replace that corpus killing one with a normal viral slash build, which just involves using hunter munitions. Let's cover those two builds and then we'll test them in steel path. Like I said, we have two builds. With this build, we have corrosive radiation, uh, cold and crit. We're using critical delay of hunter munitions valsense just to make sure in with the, uh, armor strip because it's a good idea with it only being a 20 it's able to do crit we use primary frostbite instead of primary uh, merciless because we're doing cold status so we get the extra crit damage and the uh multi shot so these are steel path corrupted so how does it uh fare against them well obviously everything has to start up because we're using galvanized mods and primary frostbite which does require you to obviously apply your cold status effect as you see it doesn't struggle once you get at least a kill how does it fare against the murmur sadly i already know what it does it does have issues against the lumbering fragments the snake and the uh automatizer but on everything else it has basically no issue but obviously you you can use it against them it's just going to take forever let's go ahead and cover the corpus killing build so like i said let's go ahead and cover the corpus killing build as you see it's pretty identical to the other one except in this case we now have a bit more status because we're now using Malignant Force, Rhyme Rounds, and High Voltage on top of Galvanized Aptitude, so we are getting even more status. We're using Primary Merciless, but in this case, if, if it was cheaper, I would say go with Primary Blight. If you have it, go for it, but I don't have it because it's way too expensive to get an, a nice maxed out one. Use Primary Merciless, Primary Blight, hell, if you want, you can even use Primary Deadhead. So, how does it fare against the Corpus? Well, I have some level 155 Steel Path Juno Lucrumens. I say it does quite all right. Obviously, it's a stacking thing, so once you get one kill, it starts going on further, and once you get the kill, it just kind of keeps going. With no issues whatsoever, basically. I'm going to go ahead and get a build ready, and show you what happens if you use it with Mirage. So when we go for the Mirage, we're going to use Eclipse, and we're going to use Hall of Mirrors. Obviously, we're going to use the Armor Stripping build, so how does it fare? Well, it's Mirage. It, she's She makes everything pretty broken. So quite strong. I'm going to go ahead and make my build properly. We're even going to use a new guy I wish to review and uh, we'll see you in Steel Path. And here we are in Steel Path. So uh, I was going to compare the Tenant one to the uh, Vandal, which uh, obviously I'll show off during here. I'll have a little, little spreadsheet comparing all, th all three of them. And the reason I think the Tenant's just overall superior than the Vandal and the normal one, other than the fact it's now a chain weapon, because the Vandal has like that on death spread thing, and the Glaxion has real nothing to it, it's just a normal beam weapon, is I think the Tenet one is just better due to the fact it gets the Progenitor, and its overall stats are just higher compared to, well, the Vandal and the normal one. It's also quite fun due to the fact it chains off just like the Amprex and the Nucor does, so you get a lot of ad clear for basically no effort whatsoever. Even its, uh auxiliary augment whatever uh photon overcharge which will be here on the screen now it's uh not that good compared to the sobek one i think photon overcharge is a bit of a lackluster uh mod overall it kind of just gives uh a bit more crit damage and a, a very small chance like two percent chance of dropping a energy orb on kill which is kind of useless nowadays with how many ways we can make energy with uh, pads, Proteus 3, like, I can just do that and get free energy, like nothing. Uh, Energy Nexus, Energy Siphon, Dreamer's Wrath, stuff like that. There's just so many ways to get energy. I think they could have done Photon Overcharge a bit different. They could have made it status-based. They could have made it, like, uh, gives crit chance and crit damage, make people actually want to replace a mod for it. But obviously, there is no need to replace a mod for it. 
as it's, well, not that good compared to the Sobek one, which, but obviously, these are just basic enemies and a couple, uh, Eximus units we keep finding. So, I will return to you once we can actually get the, uh, Acolyte spawn. And we got ourselves a Acolyte that has finally decided to spawn. Who do we get? Torment. So something I would recommend changing on this build, by the way, is formatting out the uh, the Exilus slot and going for a uh, going for a bit of a uh, beam length increasement. Obviously, how does it work on her? Well, once we get through the shield, obviously it's a status weapon, so it does struggle a little bit because the where the hell the acolytes have always been good against the status effects, basically on everything, but Obviously, once you get through the shield, it does basically what every other weapon does whenever it comes to using something in Steel Path. It can kill the Acolyte. But obviously, that's just a 5-minute one, so I'll be back once we get the 10-minute uh, one. So, we finally got our 10-minute uh, Acolyte. I almost said Tormentor. <laughs> Who do we got? Misery. Not that bad. I hate that noise. It's terrifying. So, obviously, since we do have a problem with not being able to armor strip these guys, this weapon is not built for single target. I'm I'm going to pop this just to show what happens if you could armor strip them. This just gives them more damage vulnerability. Obviously, this thing is better when it has many enemy to chain off of, not just a enemy to chain off of. There we go. What was that? But, as you see, it doesn't have that many issues as long as there's more enemies, but it does struggle with single target damage like most beam weapons do. So... I'll head uh, to my orbiter and give you all my final thoughts on the weapon compared to obviously the others and itself as a whole. So I'll see y'all when I'm back at the orbiter. So what do I think about the Technical Axion? I personally think it is a very good option for if you just want a nice beam weapon that isn't obviously the Amprex because the Amprex I believe you can classify as more as a crit weapon. This is more of a status weapon. And if you compare it to the Galaxion and the Galaxion Vandal, it is just a literal direct upgrade because compared to the Glaxion, you have 34 cold compared to 26. And when you compare it to the Vandal, you have 34 compared to 29. You also have higher base crit, crit multiplier status, and basically higher everything compared to the Vandal and normal. Other than like magazine. I think that's about it. I think the I think it's slower on reload and has smaller magazine compared to the Vandal. And I think that's about it. Other than its dispo being like 0.5 like it is with every weapon that comes out so uh go ahead and try to pick up a tenant galaxion it is quite strong the pretenders help it a ton but are you going to replace a uh slot for uh photon overcharge no you're not going to replace a slot for this so if y'all want to see uh more videos like this they will be a little bit slower because like i said on my twitter i am sadly entirely out of uh forma completely out i'm waiting on them to build so if y'all want send me forma bundles i will not complain you don't have to i will just have to end up waiting for the forma so if you want to see more like this make sure you guys hit that like button subscribe uh turn on bell for post notifications and do comment what weapons you guys still want to see because i still do have a card on weapons i have to cover and i may end up having to redo that sobek video once i get the mod for it and possibly a sarin just to do the same acid shells build that everyone else does but i'm not sure so I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out.